Hello everyone and welcome back to Prestige Reef. Now, I have a huge amount of to do today, so I thought what I'll do is rather than do, I'll basically film while I do it. Uh, and hopefully you'll get it all in, um, but we shall see. So what I need to do, uh, I need to uh, do a wall change on system one. You can tell it's early because the lights aren't even on on some of the systems. So I've got my wall change ready, which is down here. Uh, well, not ready, I've got the salt ready. There's fresh water in the tank already. Uh, I need to change the carbon and, uh, and the filter uh, on the RO unit. I need to cut up some corals, because I've got a few people requesting things like the... Uh, well, I'll show you the corals later I'm going to cut up. Um, and I've got some new corals to go on the website today as well. So, busy. Busy, busy, busy. So, let's, um, uh, let's crack on, basically. I don't know if you can see my face or not, but... Right, so I'm going to start with the ward change. Wall change on this system is so easy because there's just a valve out here which I'll show you. Uh, at which, so what I do, turn the, drain all the water down, turn the valve, fill it back up with fresh water, and then put this salt in. So this is the this is the most difficult part of the water change. So these bags are already measured out from obviously when I was away, and then you just have to try to like work the salt in like that, and then. As you can see, I just let it let it drain in like that. I do it slowly because it doesn't need to be because otherwise, if you uh, if you do it too quick, it all comes to the bottom. Uh, and then the other thing I need to do is turn the MP40 on. So I've got that plugged in up here. If ever you see this like this in the video, uh, like wonder why an MP40 is hanging down, it's because I only have I don't have a power supply for this one, so I unplug the MP40 for this tank and then plug this one in temporarily, turn it on, and then, as you can see, down here, it turns on and mixes the salt for me. So yeah, that's, <laughs> that's step one, basically. Uh, if you can do water change that easy, like all I do now is leave it for, a, for an hour and a half to mix until it's completely clear. Uh, the temperature is already the same temperature, roughly, or as because as, it's, it's been in here overnight, so it's, uh, it's a couple of degrees short uh, lower but it's, uh, it's not too bad. Um, so yeah, that's, that's that. Uh, if you wonder why I've got glasses on, it's because, as I said, it's early, so I haven't even done my hair. So what I'm doing is I'm putting these here because no one will notice, see? See, you, you just think it's meant to be like this, but the reality is I am just a mess. <laughs> so <laughs> for those of you who haven't seen this before, I forgot to mention, this is how I get fresh water into the tank, and then there's a, a waste drain over there. So the water comes from this, this RO unit here, not unit, like, well, storage, uh, and then turn this valve, comes down here, and then that's how easy it is to do a water change for me. So you can see why this system has basically ruined all other aquariums for me, because it's just so easy. And um, although I am looking at six foot tanks at the moment, uh, for obviously the kitchen, uh, what I do know is I will, I'm gonna, Probably, well, not, well, not probably, definitely, because I won't do it. I'm going to put a drain through the wall so that although I'll have to lift buckets of salt water in to, for that tank, I will just turn a valve and it will drain outside for um, so that I don't have to lift them back out, if you see what I mean. Because um, anything I can do to make the, uh, the process simpler is uh, it's worth it in the long run. So I'm a bit distracted. I'm hearing a weird noise. <laughs> Right, so the noise was coming from the Vector L2s. Uh, what's happening, the splash from here is being, like the bubbles are being sucked underneath, because there's a, there's a pipe under this floor. Uh, as you can see, it comes out there. And it's are being drawn into the Vectra. And then as you can see, there's a few little bubbles. There's one over there. Like just every so often, you see a few little bubbles popping up and that was what that noise was. Right now, as I said, the next thing I need to do is change the filters on the RO unit. Now, if you haven't got an RO unit, um, you should definitely get one. This is one of the things in the hobby which is absolutely insane. People will spend thousands of pounds uh, collectively on, on coral and fish and supplements, but they don't have an RO unit. So people think they're complicated. They're not complicated. I mean, you can literally get a plumber to fit it for you, and then they just, they're literally basically just plug in and play. Um, but if you don't know the quality of the water going into your tanks, then like you, it's just, 
I cannot emphasize enough. Go and buy one. Go and buy one. Stop buying water from shops. <laughs> Because um, you just, as I said, like some shops, very reputable shops, they'll give you good zero TDS water, brilliant, can't like, if, or, or at the very least, get a TDS meter and take it to the shop. Like, I think they cost like five pounds or like probably seven dollars in America. Take it to, um, and to the shop and test the water and then you know, then you know for sure uh, if you uh, are getting good quality water. This, the other thing is, this is one of the, uh, easiest ways to save money so although there is a more expensive uh, although it's more expensive like the outlay uh, once you've got it it lasts it lasts for years basically but it should it last essentially indefinitely as long as you keep replacing the filters and the uh membrane so um so so yeah just go buy one the only issue i have with this one and to be fair it isn't in the right place uh, I wanted everything in this room so it could all obviously connect automatically uh, but the biggest issue I have is condensation so it's not unusual for there to be water yeah, you can see on here uh, where it's, it's condensating um, this doesn't well it didn't happen when it was in my kitchen because obviously everything was room temperature whereas in here it's like you know a very very tropical environment so just just doing its job a little bit squeaky but it's doing its job um, so the reason I'm changing this is because, as you can see, it is filthy and the more often you change these, uh, which they're, they're like pretty cheap basically, the more often you change these, uh, the less DI resin you have to go through. So, uh, and it's, it's much quicker to change this than it is to change three of these. You can see it's got, it looks, I think the, obviously the orange filter makes it look slightly green, but it's actually just brown. Um, but I've seen, actually I have seen them much, much worse than this. Uh, and then obviously you just put it in your miscellaneous bucket of, uh, of random other like fish waste. And then obviously there's the carbon one dump. Now people ask me all the time what it takes to grow corals, which essentially look like this. Maybe not that one, that was slightly the wrong color. Slightly, slightly. it's got a slight pink hit. It's huge. I'm not sure if that's the actual colour it's meant to be or not, but people ask me all the time what it, what it takes to grow... Nope, can't see there either. <laughs> this is not going well. To grow corals, basically... Probably pick the wrong tray. Right, start again. People ask me all the time what it takes to, uh, to grow corals that look like this. Um, and, um, and basically, it's just dedication. It's just about the, the, finer, the finer details. So you can see some of the corals aren't open at the moment because the lights have only just come on. But it it's literally is, it's about doing all, the, everyone knows there's lots of little things that we, you can do. Um, but uh, it's about doing those little things. Now all these things add up, all these tiny small things, like as I said, changing the RO filter when it comes, when the TDS gets to one or um, or changing the filter socks regularly, or cleaning your filter socks regularly. Um, they all make a difference because they all add up. How like, sometimes you don't feel like doing a water change, uh, and they go, oh, I'll leave it, and then you leave it, and it, it, it takes a week. These all affect your ability to grow high quality corals. So if you want to grow high quality corals, it just comes down to dedication and discipline. So, uh, do you want to see something else funny? This, so that, uh, you can see on the wall, I've taken off a lot of the uh, stuff. This, I thought was written in whiteboard pen, permanent marker so uh, I will be able to get it off I just need to get some sort of uh, some sort of cleaner I basically just scratched the other one off so um, you can see now it's properly doing doing the bubbles see there so anyway yeah that's my little tip the other thing because speaking of like dedication I'm not sure, quite sure how to put this because I am not some sort of like guru or or like expert in basically anything all a lot of people will say, say to me, they wish they could do this. They wish they could have a coral farm and sell lots of corals and things like that. Now, I'm not anyone special. I promise you, I'm not anyone special. I'm just an average person. Now, the reason I'm telling you this is, is because all it takes is dedication. Absolute dedication. There were many evenings when I was, had a full-time job that I would work on the channel. I mean, you, it, originally it was weekends and evenings, which as I said previously once, that 
it had a significant effect on my relationship because I became so focused on doing this because this was my goal from about five years ago. So you have to have a long-term goal and then you have to go, you have to constantly ask yourself, is what you're doing now contributing towards your goal or is it hindering your goal? So a lot of people will go, oh, I, I just I like to go and sit down and, and watch TV in the evening, which is fine. If you like to sit down and watch TV in the evening and you don't have this as your goal, then by all means, sit down and watch TV in your evening. But I very rarely watch TV. I re very rarely do lots of things because I ask myself constantly, is this activity contributing towards my goal? And if it isn't, I know the answer. So that's all it takes, just extreme dedication. Although this has only been around for about a year and a, and a couple of months now, this process started probably, well, originally it started, if you think about it, well, be basically 15 years ago now, because uh, I think I've just passed the 15 year mark of, uh, of keeping, keeping fish. But I think the channel's seven years old. So it's taken seven years to get to this point. But my God, is it worth it? Because I have the absolute best job in the world. So if you're sitting at your desk and you're thinking, this isn't what I want to do, I'm not sure where I'm going with this. I've kind of got off on a tangent. This is no longer a, a fish, a fish like YouTube channel. I'm now just teaching you about life lessons, <laughs> which sounds really odd. But I just I thought the other day I thought it was important that that you know basically you can change your life. I changed mine. I hated my job. I basically hated it. Every day I use that hatred to focus my mind and go, how do I do something else? And, uh, and I did this. So it's just starting to come to, uh, to, to, it's just, it's almost like I feel like I've, I've just achieved the goal I wanted, but it's not enough anymore. I want this, but much bigger. It's a long-term plan. As I said, you need to have a long-term goal. Um, and if my long-term goal is eventually to have a warehouse full of coral and it's going to take 10 years to get there, it's good having that goal. It's good having that goal. So there you go, a little life lesson for you. Now we'll go out and start coral farms. Right, now there are two main corals and we'll be focusing on today and then uh, if I get a chance, there'll be a third. Uh, so the first ones are the euphilias. As you can see, uh, most of these have two heads. So lots of people seem to want to buy, there are some people that want to buy bigger corals. Uh, but generally speaking, people usually want to buy one head from me. So I need to cut these all down to one head. Uh, and then the second coral that I'm going to focus on is actually around here, uh, is the, uh, the Witch Hunter Montipora. Is, uh, I've had a lot of people ask to, uh, to buy this coral, uh, and I sold all the frags I had of it, so now I have to uh, do more. So I might get around to doing the Mean Streak, but we shall see, because obviously as you can see it's growing basically out of control. Uh, and then the final coral I'll get round to, if possible, uh, is Zoas. So I've got loads in the other tank that need doing as well. While on the topic of euphilia, this is probably a good way to segue into uh, the next section, which is a promise. I have some new corals, so I have, I'm not very good with torch names. I know the one at the back is a dragon soul, so I've got two heads of dragon soul, so that will be one of the pieces being fragged. Uh, that won't be on the website today, unless someone specifically comes forward and says, I want to buy two heads of it. Um, this is a Hellfire, and then this is a uh, New York Mix, I believe. Or, I need to double check, it could be the other way around. I'm not, torches are something I've never been that interested in. So I've never had these, uh, I've had, them, I've had the uh, Hellfire once before, and a Dragon Soul once before, but I've never had... Um, uh, I've never had them in a, like a display tank because I'm just not that interested in torches, which I know for some people is probably blasphemy. I also thought I would give you a top-down view so of those uh, those torches. Now I've turned the flow off so you can see they have very little m movement, but uh, they are they're pretty special and they're 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 not two heads, but some of them are, are quite significant. Uh, I think my favourite is actually the dragon soul. I'm not sure why. I just I kind of like it's more of like the subtle coloration and like the the pattern as the colors change on it rather than being sort of like solid solid I suppose actually I'm not really sure what I'm talking about for whatever reason I just like this one the most 
so which I think is actually the most common, so lucky me. This is another of the new corals I got the other day. Um, now, I am unlikely to have this on the website. I actually got two of them because there's another one up here, similar. Um, I'm un it's unlikely they will be on the website today because the chances are I will frag these because these are, are sort of bigger pieces and they... Oh, I won't zoom in properly, there you go. Uh, yeah, it's a chance I'll frag these. Unless someone specifically comes forward and says, I need to have that piece, uh, I'll probably frag them. I got this insane blasto. So this is the normal blasto. Uh, these are the Midas Touch gold ones next to it. I then have a, just obviously a red blasto. Uh, I, I think these are called Black Widows, but I'm not 100% certain. And then this is an absolute monster. I'd never seen one before, and when I, when I saw it, I had to buy it. And then moving on, we've got a few nice trackies. This one is mine. This is the one that everyone wants to buy all the time. I get messages saying, can I buy this trackie? Uh, it's got sentimental value to me, so I don't, uh, I don't sell it. But this one is not that different. I mean, it's a little bit different, but this one basically started like the other one. Uh, I've got this one, which I got was because quite interesting, because this is actually two trackies that are joined. They are two entirely individual trackies. There's like a, a double trackie. Uh, and then this one I quite liked because it was had a lot, a lot of purple on it and and then the final one which is mostly sort of red and orange. So. Now I'm sure many of you will have noticed that there is, uh, well since, since the start of, uh, of the pandemic there has been a significant increase in the cost of corals and fish. Uh, part of that is because um, obviously planes aren't flying as often and the corals obviously are shipped on planes and everyone's trying to get the same um, like the same space on, on less planes, so the cost of delivery has, has gone up significantly since the start of the pandemic. Uh, but the other reason, uh, with some corals, for example the trackies, which I just showed you, uh, and the scully, which I'm going to show you in a minute, uh, is that Australia has um, limited their collection of certain corals. So it's certain acans, trackies, scullies, there, there's a whole list of them that they've listed. Now, exactly the same as with uh, the yellow tanks, when Hawaii uh, basically put a ban on it, uh, they shot up in price. The, I, saw, I saw some flame angels recently, which I've never, I haven't seen a flame angel in a long time. Uh, I don't actually go to that many shops anymore, um, but uh, the flame angel cost 200 pounds. The last time I saw a flame angel, it cost 70. So that, that, uh, that shows you what's happening. So as I said, like with the Flame Angels and Achilles Tangs and um, Yellow Tangs, uh, the price of Trackies and Scullies and Acans unfortunately is increasing and is likely to continue to increase. Uh, Australia haven't put a total ban on, um, but it's just, it has, uh, it, it's, I think, I'm not 100% certain, so don't, don't quote on this, and there are, there are articles out there. I think what they're doing is they are doing some research to see the impact on the environment uh, to see if what they're taking is having a harmful effect. And until then, uh, there's basically a reduced quota. So, um, which, you know, look, it's good. It's good for the environment, not so good for, obviously, the hobbyists, but we would want these. The, we would want to protect the environment so that we can, basically, they could be hobbyists for years to come. So is it, is it that bad that they're, they're limiting the collection? In my opinion, no, but I'm sure there will be some people which will, be, will have been hit hard by it obviously the collectors, um, but I don't really like to talk about things I don't know a huge amount about, so other than, so that's why I don't really talk about fish tanks. <laughs> but uh, anyway, right, so I've got a scully to show you. Unfortunately, a lot, of the, um, a lot of the pieces have actually sold already, because what happens is I put a post out on Instagram, and then a few little sneaky people, they're like, sneak forward before I get them on the website, and they're like, I'll buy that from you. And uh, it's sort of convenient for me for, to do that, because then I'd have to take pictures, and I don't have to um, put on the website, so, um, and then so, a few local people come and collect stuff. So I've actually only got one other piece to show you, but it's actually a piece that I really, really like. I lied a minute ago because I said I only had one extra coral to show you, which is probably one of the nicest, but uh, I actually have two, actually three. So I got these really, really nice fungiers. Uh, there's the first one, and then there is the second one. They are super bright. I don't know if the camera is, is picking up just how bright they are. Uh, but these are some of the nicest uh, fungi that I've seen in a long time. I did have a red one, but that one sold already. 
uh, by one of those sneaky people that snuck in snuck in early. But uh, if you're a fungi lover like me, so you, you get like some of the normal ones, you get green and orange. Um, the uh, I, I have the bounce one still, which is down here. You can see all the little little bubbles on it. Um, but the uh, these are two. I'm like a fungi connoisseur. And then the final coral to show you is this uh, this scully. Uh, it is a wall paint scully. As you can see, it's only little. This is one of the corals which, uh, as I said, unfortunately, is more expensive than they used to be. Um, but the reason I like it is because it's got like these blue stripes in it. So that's what made it stand out to me. Uh, it, this actually isn't in very good light. This is this is the low light tank, partly to, uh, to try and keep the Xenia under control. <laughs> but yeah, so even in a dimly lit area, uh, it's still, as you can see, it still has a really bright coloration to it. And if I actually pick it up, it will close up a little bit and move it under the light. It only gets brighter. And so this is one of my really, really nice pieces. Uh, I do, these are some of the zoas I need to, need to, to get around to fragging, actually. These, I believe, they're called Space Chaos. Right, now I have just realized how long this video is going to be, uh, which means if you want a video this week, you're going to have to come back next week for the, uh, the second half of it. Um, I'm not quite sure how long it's going to be, but I think I'm at like 35 minutes so far. So um, I need to cut that down already. Uh, but everything I said at the start of the video, like obviously what, like photo photographing the corals and, and things like that uh, and some of the fragging, I'll have to, uh, I'll have to show you next, next week. Um, but yeah, so I hope you enjoyed watching the video. Please feel free to comment below if you have any questions. If you did enjoy it, why not click that like and subscribe button. Uh, I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone that supports the channel on Patreon. Um, have a good week and I will see you next time.